Hi there, this is Alex Lubomirsky. I uh, hope you're doing well. Um, I wanted to talk to you about this time we're spending on our own at our homes. Um, there will be moments of reflection. We're being forced into a time of uh, self-reflection. With that being said, I wanted to tell you a little story about the greatest gift that I ever received. Um, my mother married my stepfather, a guy called John Mannering. And when I was about two years old, they got married. Um, John was the best stepfather you could ever hope for. He was the, the, they broke the mold with him. He was the God's gift of all stepfathers. When, about seven or eight years ago, he was, uh, he went to the hospital to get a checkup to, to see something and they said that he had cancer pretty much everywhere and he was, he had three weeks left to live, uh, which was obviously a huge shock to us uh, and the family. Um, so my brother and my sister and I all rushed home to be with him for those last three weeks. Now John was a sports freak. He loved Chelsea. I always remember growing up, I would go into his room and he'd be lying on his bed uh, watching Chelsea on the TV. He'd have a radio next to his, uh, on his bedside table listening to the cricket in Australia or India. And he'd be reading the paper, reading about the rugby results. Uh, so he loved all sports. Um, so when he came home from the hospital, we said, listen, we're going to get you three or four TVs so you can watch all of your favorite sports all the time. And he said, please don't do that. He said, it's really funny. I don't care anymore. Now I know I'm going to die. I just don't care about it anymore. And um, he said, it's really funny that knowing you're going to die imminently, because we all know we're going to die, uh, but knowing you're going to die imminently, he said it, it cleanses all of the things that you worried about in your life, all the stupid stuff that you used to worry about in your life, the, the, the unnecessary, unimportant stuff that you used to worry about. He said it just falls away and you're left with the two or three really important things in your life. And for him that was, one was knowing that he'd spent as much time as possible with his family. The other one was that he had loved and he had been loved. And the third one was that he had done charity work in his last few years of his life. And he'd worked for the Samaritans, which is a, a call-in center. When you're feeling suicidal, you call in and you have somebody like John on the other end of the line who uh, is an ear for you or a shoulder to cry on. Um, and he came, he used to come home saying that he felt so blessed in his life because he realized it gave, it gave him such perspective on life. And uh, he said it was such a, a, a gift for him to be able to do that. So when he came home, we obviously my brother and my sister and I and my mother were always, you know, we were crying a lot downstairs and because it was such a huge shock. But because I'm an inquisitive sort of guy, I would go upstairs and talk to John and about how he felt and what emotions he was going through. And he said, you know what, on the first day I came home and I was really angry and bitter. Like, why, why is this happening to me? Uh, he said, but on the second day I woke up and I felt so grateful. Grateful that I hadn't been hit by a bus and gone like this. Grateful that we get to spend three weeks together and, you know, and we can say all the things we wanted to say to each other. We can tell each other how much we love each other. We can tell each other stories. We can just be together and be surrounded by his loved ones as, as he passes on. We also talked about to be able to talk to somebody who is at the end of their life is such a unique perspective. And so I said, you know, listen, because this is, you're able to look at your life in its entirety, what do you feel about it? What, what is, what, what's your view on what life is about? Why are we here? We arrive on this planet with nothing as a spirit or a soul, and we leave with nothing. We can't take our riches or our cars or our jewels or our money with us. So, how do we make sure that we leave this life richer uh, than when we arrived? And we decided it's about enriching your soul. And we came to the conclusion that it's really simple. Obviously you have to survive. You have to have a job to make money to, to, to provide for your family. 
uh, and um, put food on the table. Um, but apart from that, it's about recognizing your blessings and sharing those blessings with others by helping others to achieve their goals, helping other people to survive. Um, and basically just sort of using all of the things that you've been given for good. We also talked about regrets. Did he have any regrets? Did he, was there anything that he wished he'd done or he was glad he'd done? And uh, he turned to me and he said, because he, he knew I was a photographer, he knew that my career was going very well. And he said, you know what, just make sure that you're not surrounded on your deathbed by a bunch of magazine covers. Make sure that you spend as much time with your family as possible. Make sure you, you, you're surrounded by people who you've loved and who you have helped or touched along the way. Um, and so this was John's amazing gift to me. It was this gift which I like to call future hindsight. So basically living my life from the point of view of me on my deathbed looking back. So after John passed away, I went back into my life and everything changed a bit um, in my head. It was amazing. I was able to make decisions so much easier. Things were so much clearer to me um, because any decision that I had, I would just think, on my deathbed, how am I gonna feel about this? Will it matter to me? Will it not matter? And it became really easy. And I realized certain things that I wanted to change. So for example, I wrote a book of fatherly advice for my sons, which I would never have done if I, before uh, this all happened. Because I'm a fashion photographer, what the hell am I doing giving fatherly advice? But thinking about John and his message, I just realized that this is not a vanity project, this is just me trying to put a little bit of light and love and knowledge out there in the world for in case it helps people and uh, it got translated into six languages. It raised over, I think, 30 to $40,000, um, which all got donated to uh, a humanitarian charity called Concern Worldwide. I also wrote a children's book. I wrote a children's book um, with my sons on gratitude. Again, I would never have done this stuff beforehand because I would be too worried about what are people gonna think of me? I started saying no to fur, feathers, and exotic skins in my photography work because I realized that I never felt comfortable shooting fur in, in, in my photography. But you did it because everybody else did it. But now with this new mindset, I thought on my deathbed, am I not gonna wish that I'd done something about this? Am I not gonna wish that I said no when I had the chance? And I knew I got told that I would lose lots of jobs because of it, and I knew that if I shut certain doors for the right reasons, then other doors would open up for me. I started an initiative called Creators for Change, where I asked all the creatives in the fashion industry to take a stand, sign a pledge, saying that they will no longer use fur, feathers, or exotic skins in any of their creative output. So far, so many people have signed up, and hopefully lots more will too. I started writing poetry, which I always wanted to do, but I thought, I'm never gonna do that. People will think I'm a complete moron, or a cheeseball. But now I don't care. It's amazing, it completely frees you up. When you are, if you imagine of all those stories you've heard about people's regrets on their deathbeds, and they, they say, I wish I'd done this, I wish I'd spent more time with my family, I'd wish I'd written poetry, I'd wish I'd done more art, I wish I'd traveled more, whatever it is. Do those things, think ahead. Get that hindsight from the future. Um, so, so that's it, I think that during this time of, of uh, reflection, we're going to go through some weird emotions, you know, you're going to go through um, some uh, some boredom, some anger, because you're going to get frustrated, um, and we're being forced to really sit with ourselves for a while. Now this can be so, so cool, and so amazing, and this is a time for you to process stuff in your head, um, and think about what you've done in your life, Think about what you want to do in your life. Think about the person you are and the person you want to be. This is an amazing moment to then come out the other side and use this as a, as a launching pad. Use this as a, as a moment to regroup, reassess, process everything, and then decide which direction you want to go forward in. But anyway, I wanted to share my gift that John gave me. 
So it really helped me and I know I've had such a blessed life and I know 100% that the last eight years have been such a blessing because of the gift that John gave me. Because of every decision I make is decided on how I'm gonna feel about that on my deathbed. So, uh, and even doing stuff like this. I mean, this is, you know, people are gonna think I'm completely stupid, but I don't care because on my deathbed, I don't care. I'm just trying to help people. If I only help one person today, then it's been worth it. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Good luck with everything. See you soon.